Welcome to MMH Special. Yes, it is special to me because on tonight's show, we feature the actress, award-winning Maria Mokoli. Maria Mokoli is an inspiration to me and to many others. She is flying the Gambian flag as high as possible. Mariama aims to do more. Mariama wants to do more. And on tonight's show, we talk to Mariama about where it started, where it's going, and where she intends to be. Are you looking to send money from the UK to your loved ones in Gambia? Remit Continental provides the platform to do just that at the most competitive rate. Plus, you get more for your money with zero transfer fees. All you have to do is download free Remit Continental app and start sending money today. Choose Remit Continental, your fastest money transfer in minutes. We have a team of friendly advisors in 150 locations in all corners of the Gambia, ready to assist you. Remit Continental is FCA approved, making our services safe and reliable to use. Remember, for a zero transfer fee, download our app today. Remit Continental, where your money matters and family comes first. Talk to Mariama about her career, how she got to the point that she's got to. I am extremely excited. Mariama! Hi! <laughs> Welcome! Thank you so um, much. Absolutely, we are honored. You are doing tremendous, amazing things. And today, what we wanted to do is talk to you about your career, how it started. Obviously, you're an inspiration, and I know there are loads of people out there. Who would want to know how it all started? How did it start for you? Well, it started when I was 12 years, a very tiny little girl, <laughs> very shy and quiet. No, I mean, people who know me very well are surprised that I've become an actress because I, I am a shy person. My family would tell you I am an introvert, you know. But then um, I had a lot of love for acting um, when I was in middle school. Uh, my headmistress identified me out of the whole school to perform on a minor role. So at first I, I was an in inferit and then she cast me on another play which I acted on lead role. And I fell in love with the storyline. I fell in love with the entire process of just acting, you know, and I was like, okay, this seems interesting and I think I would want to do more of it. So I decided to join all organizations that were relevant in the school, the drama club, uh, PI Health Unit, Lenihan Society, Children Against AIDS. I, will, I went all out on it because I wanted to build my confidence, my public speaking skills, you know, and then we started having our youth show on Brickham FMB, still doing some drama plays here and there. And that's where really it all started from. And then I started winning awards during competitions. I won my first award in 2004, Best Actress with YMCA Drama Competition. And then I went to high school. I won so many titles, Best Actress during inter-school drama competitions. How was it for you convincing your parents? Because at that time, was it slightly difficult for you to kind of like convince them that you're going to go into acting? Because was that the norm then? My family were not really um, forcing me to do anything. I mean, they knew I was very active in school because anytime they go to the school, the teachers will tell them about me. And they were always surprised because at home I'm very quiet. So how comes I go to school? <laughs> I'm very involved in so many stuff. I became the head girl. So they were just um, encouraging me to go ahead with whatever that I wanted. I mean, as long as I was monitored because my organization presidents or rep always have to come home and explain why I have to leave the house for any activity or bring a letter, you know, and then I'll be given time, of course, on when I have to come back home. But they will still encourage me to go do what I have to do. 
So my family have been very supportive, especially my mom. I mean, she's been my biggest fan. Um, I think they felt more comfortable when they saw me perform because they would come to the school and they saw that, all right, she was, that I was really passionate about what I wanted to do. So they really supported. So years later, you become a radio presenter and also you took your acting career to another level. Tell us about Mehmet. How was it for you? What was the preparation like? How did you get that role? The producer of Mbibit, Usman Jaju, is a great brother of mine. We knew each other way back from Mediamatic. He was one of my bosses there. And I knew us also in the acting. Uh, when we used to meet at competition, he was a Yidak member and a very amazing actor as well. So uh, when he called me and told me he wanted to come to Gambia and produce Mbibit, I couldn't say no to him. Though at that time, I just finished another project. That was was the gifts from Babylon and I was taking a break and there he come, there he comes with his demands from Bibit and I'm like bro I'm on my holiday like can you allow me to just rest and it's like no I'm coming to Gambia and we're going to work on this and I said no problem we can work on this we collaborated through my company studio 411 so I was handling production management at the same time acting lead role when he first suggested that I do both I was like that's too demanding because production management alone is a whole job of its own I have to work on the cast I have to work on location with you you know with um, logistics to make sure the project goes well at the same time you want me to act a very sensitive role as lead actress which was very emotional as well and he's like I have no other person you have to do it <laughs> so I'm like great this is a good challenge I'm still gonna do it so I put my all into it, uh, the, the, the production went really well and it became a success. The movie itself is winning so many awards. You know, we collaborated with STS Pictures and uh, Image and Sound and myself with Studio 4 and one We worked very well together, collaborated. Everyone brought in their ideas and made Mbebet what it is. Because obviously you've been doing stage and all these other things. How was it to transition from that into doing a full-blown production? That's not my first movie. I mean, I was, my first movie was in 2013. That is The Hand of Fate, uh, written by Auntie Janet Bajan Young. Uh, it was a stage play, so Ibrahim Sise adopted it into a screenplay. Uh, so I was acting lead role there as well. It's also centered on child marriage and that movie got me nominated for the African Oscar in 2014 when the movie came out so uh, my first movie really was in 2013 and after that um, we had a big production here from a Swedish company that came to Gambia to produce a movie and I, I acted on that movie actually they saw me from the hand of fate movie online and came to Gambia looking for me that's how I got on that movie so um, Bibit is my third theme actually for production management um, I did gifts from Babylon gifts from Babylon is a movie on migration and is currently winning so many awards Awards internationally and I worked on that movie as production manager as well I refused to act because I didn't want to be too greedy like uh, they were giving me both roles and I'm like you know what I'll concentrate be the production manager and give opportunity to other actors who want to act to act on that movie and at the moment how do you find the Gambian film industry what do you think needs to be done to uplift those actors and actresses who are trying to be the next Maria Makoli I think the government has a lot of work to do. We have a whole ministry that is not really supporting the work that we do or complementing the work that we do. I grew up in the movie industry and trust me, I haven't seen anything change. Individually, we are doing well for ourselves. Individual producers will come produce movies, will win awards, will go on festivals, will do this, will do that. But what is really the government doing for us? I mean, I've approached them even for my unveiling ceremony. Unfortunately, the minister couldn't make it. They said he had an engagement. NCSC came, which is fine. But again, for me, it shows that really, the, I don't think the ministry is really interested in the cultural sector of the Gambia, especially the film industry. Uh, we, we haven't gotten any setup that will protect our work. We haven't gotten any setup that will also promote our work and even make it easy. There are no funds. Any movie that you see produced in Gambia is funded by us, the producers, the makers. Everything comes out from our pockets. 
you know, when we go to them, there's always an excuse. They don't even have a budget for us. So, I mean, we have a lot of work to do. NCSC, I think, also needs to tighten up their belt and uh, to support us more. We don't want NCSC to always represent us in these international platforms or even national platforms because we know what we are dealing with, I think, better than they do. We are the ones on the ground making these movies. We are the people working with actors and producers in the country who are struggling a lot. So I think it's fair enough if they have opportunities uh, to also involve us in it instead of continuously representing us. And when they come back, we don't even hear any feedbacks. We see them travel. When they come back, there are no feedbacks, really. What did you tell people out there? What are you doing for us? What are you lobbying for us? So I think the government needs to do a lot. We have various guilds in um, organizations that are built. But again, individually, even with these organizations, we can't do it alone if the government doesn't come in place. We're going to take our first break right now, but when we come back, Mariama tells us more about where she wants to be, how she wants to continue to inspire, and what's next for her. We'll be right back. Are you looking to send money from the UK to your loved ones in Gambia? Remit Continental provides the platform to do just that at the most competitive rate. Plus, you get more for your money with zero transfer fees. All you have to do is download free Remit Continental app and start sending money today. Choose Remit Continental, your fastest money transfer in minutes. We have a team of friendly advisors in 150 locations in all corners of the Gambia, ready to assist you. Remit Continental is FCA approved, making our services safe and reliable to use. Remember, for a zero transfer fee, download our app today. Remit Continental, where your money matters and family comes first. talking about how there are three important things that you would require for from the government obviously if you want this film industry to go further which is support funding and more support i think structures needs to be put in place to make our work easier obviously we'll need funding we'll need rehearsal grounds because our work comes with a lot of rehearsal in the whole country we don't have a rehearsal ground we keep running everywhere into people's spaces some would charge us money some would throw us out you know and it's frustrating i've seen people leave this country because they couldn't handle it anymore they, they go and pursue their career somewhere else because the facilities are not put in place uh, we need to be protected our works need to be protected the copyright law is still not enacted and then a whole lot of work needs to be done really from the government level what about the support from the gambian people what would you say about that that is gradually changing. Now we've seen screening grounds filled up. When we did Mbibit screening, it was filled up. In 2013, Hand of Fate, Jama Hall was filled up. Uh, I think we also need to bring our attention to theater. Ibunjen Theater is the only theater in the Gambia uh, run by an amazing woman, Auntie Janet Bajanio, who has created a space for us to learn for free and also develop our acting skills. Basically, that's our school. That's, that's a ground that we are able to uh, walk and also educate ourselves because there's no performing arts school in the Gambia. And I think the Gambian community needs to look into theaters. Don't be sitting online waiting for us to do plays and record them and bring it for you online. True, everything is advancing now. But theaters are spatial. The reason why we build theaters is for people to go there, sit down and watch the play have a feel of what acting is like with these actors on stage you know just like you going to a music concert having direct attention or direct contact with the performer it's the same thing with theater we just uh, did the lion and the jewel for high school um, students who are about to sit to their wives and we did it for free we scout for funding for support nobody sponsored us i think it was just unesco who came on board and individuals who bought tickets to the gala to come uh, support us 
So I think gradually it is changing, but still more support is needed. Uh, when you win an award, it's all over the internet, it's all over the social media. But really, reach out to these individuals, and they will not give you the support that you want, but they all want to hail and support you on social media, have your photo up. But when we need you to really support us, I take a ticket to you or I bring a proposal that I'm doing an event, you give me excuses. COVID-19 has been used as an excuse <laughs> this year, which I understand. You want that extra support. Come to the shows. Do what you can just to, to just make sure that this industry is pushed as far as it can go because we can be the next um, Nollywood or Bollywood or whatnot. Do you believe in that? I do, 100%. We have the potential, we have the knowledge, we have the skill. Uh, if I'm being recognized on a platform like the US Hollywood Golden Fair, or Romania that means that we have the potential and the talent here we just need to be more visible we need our works to reach to those major platforms I think Gambians need to stop keeping their work to ourselves just for home let's work on content that can also stand out on the international market you have had a lot of obstacles I'm sure along the way of your success who inspires Maria Macaulay? On a daily basis, my mom. She's my rock and roll. Like that lady, I, I can't pay her enough for anything. Um, when I'm down, when I want to give up, she's the only person who will be like, ah, you've come a long way to just give up like that. Come on, you can do this. You know, and um, I, I, I am so blessed to have her by my side, despite the challenges. Sometimes I'll call her and cry to her, and she'll be like, this is just the beginning. There's nothing that comes easy. You know, and that motivates me more to wake up the next day, get dressed and go do that job. So I'm really blessed to have her by my side. And of course, um, I'm really grateful. Tell us about the nomination and the award that you won. So recently, I won two awards, the US Hollywood Golden Film Award. So Mbibet was submitted to that platform and uh, under the category Best Up and Comma Actress. So yeah, um, I won. Um, it was a category with so many amazing actors from the US, from Europe, and I was the only African and only Gambian under that category, and I won. And the Romania uh, Long Story Shorts uh, Film Festival, which is also a competition um, for Best Actress, um, Bebet was submitted, and I won Best Actress. So I'm really excited that these two major platforms recognized my work. And they don't even know me. I mean, I don't, <laughs> I don't know them either. They just wow. saw me from the movie and thought I deserved these awards. So all they saw was your movie um, online. And how did the process go? How did they get in touch? Producers have to submit movies to these fest festivals. It's not like they come to you. We have so many festivals and award uh, ceremonies happening globally. So uh, it's the responsibility of the producers to uh, write to them or submit uh, uh, to them and say, hey, I want my movie to be on this category. I want my movie on your festival. What are the procedures? How do I go? about it and obviously they'll send you an email and tell you all about it and there you go you do it and I think uh, a lot of Gambians uh, also need to look into that don't just produce a movie do a premiere one night and you go trash it or put it down on your decks look out for all these festivals we have festivals in Africa in Asia in Europe and the United States everywhere around the globe and there are se several seasons to all of this so you can always check them out online and submit the movies what is your type of film? What type of movies have you watched that has absolutely inspired you? When I was a child, my family would say, Man, I'm a buga tele. like I'm always watching TV. <laughs> Anytime, you know, you, you, if you want to find me, just go to where the television is, you will find me there. So uh, growing up, I was so attached to uh, TV shows. Obviously during our time, that's when you had the Cosby Show, uh, First Prince of Bel-Air, Family Matters. And these were movies I would watch and say, oh, someday I want to do this as well. I want to be in it. And I was really inspired with the storylines that they had on it. So I love drama and comedy a lot. And um, you know, I've watched really so many amazing movies. Sometimes I can get caught up, obviously, not uh, to sit down and watch, especially now. But I, I love drama and comedy a lot. And um, I've been inspired with the storylines of these movies that I've been seeing as well. What is your advice 
to the next Mariama Poli of the Gambia. I want them to do better than I have done, I have accomplished. Uh, I want them to understand that they need discipline to be successful. Uh, in every career, I mean, especially what we do, it requires a lot of discipline. You need to be on time, you need to, re re you need to respect rehearsals, which so many people don't take seriously here. Even for screen, if you have your script, you have to find time and rehearse before you go on set. The same thing with stage performance. I've recommended so many people to the theatre, but they disappear with time because they don't want to put in the commitment and the work to constantly come and train and be trained as well. People feel too comfortable with the little that they know or the skill that they have that they think they're too good to be directed or to be guided through. So always open up to learn and develop yourself. Be disciplined, look for learning opportunities. Until today, I am still learning to, to grow better, to perfect my craft and to, to grow further as well because this is just a baby step. For me, this is nothing. This is just the beginning of my whole journey chapter and more to come as well. And I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not all comfortable in my zone saying, oh, now I have accomplished it. No, this is, this is the time for me to even work harder. I'm trying to learn to develop myself better. So don't stop learning always and listen. Be open-minded to listen to what other people have to tell you. You might not take all of it, but just have an opening um, of accepting other people's comments and just listen to them whatever that is genuine take it and the rest just trash it out you know and believe in yourself be confident i see a lot of people taking for granted here because you don't believe in yourself you allow other people to take advantage of you now if you are able to learn and develop yourself nobody will take advantage of you because they know you can do the stuff and they'll come after you you don't have to keep chasing them for roles or to be featured on productions on stuff like that and be humble be humble about everything because that is what will take you far if i wasn't humble enough i don't think i would have gotten approached from anybody or i don't think the gambian community will also get to know my story so be humble about everything that you do celebrate yourself as much as you want to but also be humble about your journey last saturday you had the event that um, they had in honor of you and the award that you won. How was that like for you? I was emotional. I think I held it back so much that I didn't cry because I, I didn't want to cry that night. But I was so emotional. I was so happy and grateful that people turn up for me. And these are very important people. They left all their engagements and came to my event. Saturday was busy. That Saturday was really busy. There were so many events happening in the Gambia. But they chose to come to my event to celebrate with me and to be there for me as well. And it it meant so much I'm really grateful to the first lady because I dedicated one of the awards to her you know because I want her to also come and see the work that we do um, she's she's the first lady she's the face of every woman in this country and uh, representing all women in all areas as well and I want her to be part of the performing art world as well to come see the theater to come see the work that we do so the government can also take steps in supporting the performing art and I dedicate that, dedicated the other award to Auntie Janet as well you know and the peers from the Ministry of Youth and Sports came you know um, the likes of Saul Fraser, Tough Africa you know so many people turn up to support my family you know and I was really grateful I was just over the moon <laughs> next for me is to grow further I want Mariama Kuli to be seen on Netflix I want Mariama Kuli to be on big platforms like the Oscar, getting nominations for the BAFTA, just like my man, Babu Sisi. <laughs> you know, I want all of that, and that's what I'm ready for. I mean, 2020, 2021 is about putting in that work to get Gambia on Netflix, to get Gambia on those major platforms, inshallah. Thank you for joining us on this special episode of MMH Special. It has been extra special for me. I hope it has been for you too. Maria Makoli is an inspiration. Maria Makoli is humbling. Maria Makoli says we need to do more. We need to support, support, support. Gambia, are we ready for Netflix? Yes, we are. Until next time, join us on our social media platforms for more of these stories.